Thank you for joining us here at Cumberland County Public Library West Regional Branch. Once again for Teen Cuisine St. Patrick's Day Punch. My name is Jessica and let's get started. So a couple of simple and easy ingredients that you'll need to make this punch. You'll need ginger ale. Now ginger ale comes in a bunch of different brands. You can use Canada Dry, Swips, uh, any of the other ones you want. You can use an off-brand like Food Line or Walmart brand. I prefer Swips. It's a lot drier. It's a lot easier when you're making a punch. Uh, what you'll also need is a can of pineapple juice, or if you want to get a bottle, you can get a bottle of pineapple juice. There's cans that are smaller than this one. Just depends on what you want and how you want to do it. Each brand is also a little bit different. I like Del Monte when I'm making a punch. There's a lot more flavor to it, a lot more to enjoy, and it's very refreshing. What you also need is lime sherbet. Now the lime sherbet, you can get also any brand. I got the Food Lion brand just because it's on a budget. It's cheaper. It's a little bit easier to get a hold of. They also have a smaller bucket. I don't need anything large if I'm just making it for myself. Now, if you want to make a bigger, larger uh, punch style so everyone else can also enjoy it, you might want to get it, want two of these tubs or a larger tub. Now there's also different brands in these. You can also do that. Uh, you can do Walmart brand, you can do Aldi's or Lidl's, whichever you'd like to do. Again, depending on your budget, depending on what you want to do, how much of it you want to do. Since we're just doing this as one cup for you guys to enjoy, you don't need anything larger than a small bottle, small can, and a small thing of sherbet. Lime sherbet's going to make this tart, so is the pineapple juice. So if you like sweet stuff, I may suggest adding a little bit of sugar, or you can switch up the, the pineapple juice and the sherbet. You can add in Kool-Aid, uh, lime flavored, or anything that is green colored, because once again, you're celebrating St. Patrick's Day and you're just making a simple punch to go with that. So you want that green color to kind of represent that. Now, you also want to go into, again, safety measures, things to keep you safe and clean. That way you don't contaminate anything. You want to make sure if your hair is long like mine, you want to do a bun or a ponytail, thusly. Or um, if you don't have the long hair, you have short hair, you want to wear something to kind of keep your hair out of everything, you may also want to do that. Or if you don't have hair, you're good to go. Now, you'll also need a cup and a spoon because you're going to need to scoop out that sherbet. You're going to want to wash your hands. When you do your washing of your hands, you want to count the ABCs. Uh, if you don't have a sink nearby, but you have hand sanitizer, just use hand sanitizer. The thing is to keep your hands clean. You want to make sure everything is safe. You're not trying to contaminate anything or anybody. Now, what you're going to want to do is, if you have a small cup like this, it's not too large, not too big, just enough to sip on. You're going to take your ginger ale first. And you want to be careful that you don't get it everywhere because as you can see, it got a little shaken up so it's trying to burst through. So then what you're going to want to do is take your cup and pour just a little bit in there. As you can see, about a finger's worth. Then you're going to want to take your pineapple juice. Now what I like to do when I do the pineapple juice is shake it up just so that way all the flavors are bursting. You have stuff that's been sitting at the bottom getting mixed in. If you like pulp, it gets the pulp moving. All right, so then you also want to be careful when you're opening the can just because there's air trapped in it. So just do it slowly. No need to rush. So then you'll take your pineapple juice and you'll just pour it in. You want to pour it in slow because as you see, the soda is going to start fizzing as you're pouring it in. And you want to get about halfway. There you go. So then take your spoon if you want to try and mix the flavors up a little bit, just so that the flavors will combine a little bit more. And you can also, if you want at this time, you can taste test it. Make sure that the soda to pineapple ratio is good, that you're comfortable with it. If you feel like you need a little bit more ginger ale, just give it a little bit more 
kick. You can pour in a little bit more. If you feel like there's not enough pineapple in it, you want more pineapple, pour in a little bit more pineapple. Just be careful not to over pour because then you'll end up not having enough room for your sherbet. You wanna make sure that the sherbet has enough room to sit in there and kind of give you the coloring that you're looking for. So speaking of the sherbet, let's go ahead and open. Now I let mine sit at room temperature so it's a little bit whooshy and whooshy so that way it would be a little bit easier for me to scoop it now if you want it to be frozen straight out of the freezer you can do that so that way you'll have ice chunks so it'll also still be colder if you don't you can leave it at room temperature so that way it melts a little bit so it's an easier to scoop easier to mix in with everything so then what you'll want to do is get one two and it looks like two scoops will be good now you can let it sit there like that and kind of have it as a kind of uh, floater or if you want to mix it in a little bit more with the rest of your drink so that way you're getting that green coloring that you want to represent St. Patrick's Day As you can see, the more that you're mixing it, the more that you're getting that coloring. And you just wanna be careful because you don't wanna, as you can see, we're all the way at the top. You don't wanna accidentally knock stuff over or get stuff off. All right, and there you go. So then you have kind of that greenish color. You still have your foam there at the top from the, the uh, Sherbert. And then let's give it a taste test. Oh well, yeah, that's good. You can add a straw to it so that way you can get the stuff at the bottom because if you're just sipping it from the cup, all, most of what you'll get is just the sherbet. So if you want a little bit of everything, stick a straw in it. If you want to make the cup pretty, you can add in a garnish like a lime or a uh, orange just to make it stand out, make it look pretty. Uh, when you're mixing it, you can actually taste the pineapple there at the top which is what I love. I love pineapple juice. It's great, it's yummy, it's delicious. But that's all you need is a simple cup, three simple ingredients, all together, mixed in. Mm. And there's your St. Patrick's Day punch to enjoy a fun holiday. What is the difference between clover and shamrocks? Clover is the common name for a ground cover plant often found in lawns and fields. It comes from the species trifolium, literally meaning having three leaves. A shamrock is the symbol we associate with St. Patrick's Day. A shamrock refers to a three-leaf clover. It comes from a Gaelic word that means little clover. According to legend, St. Patrick used the shamrock to explain the Holy Trinity with one leaf each representing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three leaves of a shamrock are also said to stand for faith, hope, and love. A four-leaf clover is an unusual mutation of a three-leafed clover. It is meant to represent God's grace and is a lucky symbol because it's hard to find. Traditionally, four leaves were considered lucky because they represented the shape of the cross and were thought to be magical or sacred. Another way of identifying a real four-leaf clover is that the fourth leaflet is usually smaller than the other three leaflets. In the Middle Ages, it was believed that carrying a four-leaf clover would enable you to see fairies, recognize witches and evil spirits, and be protected from the evil eye. Even dreaming of clover was supposed to bring good luck. Your chance of finding a four-leaf clover are one in 10,000. Statistically speaking, you would need to search an area of about 12.9 square feet. If you find one, giving it to someone else doubles your luck. Superstitions aside, clover is a valuable plant in many ways. Bees and other pollinators can't resist its flowers. 
red clover is especially attractive to bumblebees. The plants can be turned into the soil as green manure. The roots host nitrogen-fixing bacteria that enrich the soil. The plants are high-quality forage for many animals. So to answer the question, a clover must have three leaves to be considered a shamrock. If the clover has more or less, then it is not a shamrock. Therefore, all shamrocks are clovers, but not all clovers are shamrocks. Thank you for joining us here at Cumberland County Public Library. Check out www.cumberland.lib.nc.us for other great videos like these. Videos last week that you may have missed, upcoming videos that are on the way of coming up. Uh, we also have some great fun books that you can check out. Now, a new one that we've gotten is the Healthy Teen Cookbook that's actually been written by a teenager herself. She was featured on Chopped. So if you're not into the other cookbooks that are written by adults, you're more than welcome to check this one out, written straight from a kid to a kid, from a teen to a teen. That way you know that the food is good. So thank you again for joining us here and have a great day. Thanks guys.